Hello again, and welcome back for the August 2024 Sky Report. My name is Vanessa, and I'm going to take you through some of the interesting things happening in the sky this month. Let's get started. To start us off, after sunset on August 5th, the 2.6% crescent moon will be visible on the horizon with the bright planet Venus. No telescope is necessary to view this event, but it should be visually stunning with the bright planet below the delicate-looking moon. Here's an example of a similar event that happened on July 6th to give an idea of what it might look like. On July 6th, the moon was only about 1.8% full, and the visible planet was Mercury. Not only will the August moon be higher in the sky and brighter, but the planet Venus is about three magnitudes brighter than the planet Mercury. The moon and Venus will also be closer together than this. Start looking for the moon and Venus to the west starting at about 8 p.m. You'll need a fairly low and clear horizon to see them. The Persid meteor shower peaks early in the morning on August 12th. The 47% waxing moon will set around midnight and won't affect viewing for the rest of the night through the morning. The Persid meteor shower is one of the better meteor showers for the year, with the peak in ideal conditions providing 100 meteors per hour. You'll need to be in a dark sky site to see anywhere near the maximum. On August 14th, Mars and Jupiter will be less than half a degree apart, which is smaller than the diameter of the full moon. That means, in a telescope, you'll likely be able to see both of them in the same view with a low-power eyepiece. The planets will rise at about 1.30 a.m., but the best time to see them is going to be between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. With some good binoculars, you should be able to see both planets together. In lower power, Mars will appear as a reddish-looking spot resembling a star, and Jupiter will be bright, and you should be able to see some of its moons. Make sure you take a really long look at the bright disk of Jupiter to see the cloud bands. A telescope might offer a more detailed view, with an apparent disk of Mars as opposed to a point, and the cloud bands on Jupiter will be much more prominent. With no binoculars or tools, you'll see Jupiter and Mars as two very bright points, very close to each other, next to the constellation Taurus. Even without a telescope or binoculars, this is a visually interesting event and definitely worth waking up early for. Let's take a look at some of the constellations we'll see throughout the month. To the south, we still have Sagittarius and Scorpius, but now they're on their way to the west to dive below the horizon. You can still see them in the first half of the night. Directly above us throughout the month is the Summer Triangle, an asterism formed by the three brightest stars in the summer sky, Altair, Deneb, and Vega. Look for this asterism to help identify the three constellations, Cygnus, Lyra, and Aquila. To the north, we see the notable constellations Ursa Major and Cassiopeia. Ursa Minor is also there, but the only star that we can see from it easily in LA is Polaris, the North Star. Part of Ursa Major in the west is an asterism known as the Big Dipper. As the night progresses, you can actually watch the Big Dipper dip below the horizon. And here is your lunar calendar for the month. The new moon is on the 4th. The first quarter is on the 12th. The full moon is on the 19th, and the last quarter is on the 26th. That's all I have for August, but thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again next month. Bye, everyone.